Okay, so this is the next part of uh, 2011 SCC Set A, Paper 1, okay? So it's question 8. During a certain point during the flight of a space shuttle, the booster rockets separate from the shuttle and fall back to Earth. The altitude of these booster rockets, i.e. the height above Earth, uh, above sea level, is given by the formula. Okay, so 45 plus 7 over 10 t minus 1 over 200 t squared, where h is the altitude in kilometers, and t is the time in seconds after separation of the shuttle. Complete the table below, showing the altitude of the rockets at the indicated time. So what's going to happen here is we're just going to get the formula. Okay. So we're going to have several times from uh, in 20 seconds. So h equals 45 plus 7 over 10 times 0. So replace t with 0 for the first one. Okay. Replace t with uh, 20 for the second one. Replace t with 40 for the third one. Replace uh, t with uh, 60 for the next one. Replace t with 80 for the next one after that. And then finally replace t with 100 for the one after that. Now all you got to do is put each equation into your calculator. Okay. And then fill out the, the table up here. So first one turns out to be 45. Second one turns out to be 57 kilometers. Third one 65. Fourth one 69. 80 is 69. And 100 is 65 kilometers per hour. Now what you're going to notice is that the first of all, the... Uh, the, what's going to happen here, okay, is basically the rocket goes up, okay, so the rocket here goes up, and what happens is it starts, it has an initial speed carried from the thrusters, okay, but then gravity acts against it, so it's going to come up and then go down again, and it's going to have a maximum height, okay, so what happens is we'll notice here that it stays at 69 twice. This means that it's gone up and come back down again. It just doesn't stay at 69. It rises and then falls back down again. So we know that the maximum height is in between 60 to 80 somewhere, okay? So what's going to, and we also notice that it starts to drop on its way down. So what we've got to do next is we've got to draw a graph, okay? So to draw this graph, what we need to do is we need to realize that the minimum value is 45 and the maximum value was 69 on our table. So what we can say is we can put 40 there, 45, and then just go up in blocks of 5. Go up in blocks of 5 to save yourself time, okay? So what we'll see here is that we have blocks of 5 all the way up, all the way up to 70, maybe even 75, okay? So what's going to happen next is we're going to start drawing the graph, okay? So the first point is 0, 45, next point is 20, 57, the next point after that is probably going to be uh, 4065. The next point after that, which is denoted in red, red ones are the points, is going to be 6069, 8069, and 165. So we can see here, if we join all these points together, we sort of get that arc and expression that we're uh, expecting. So remember when you're joining up the points to make sure that it's smooth and each point goes through the, each line goes to each point. So this is our graph here, okay? And we see our x-axis there. So what we're going to be asked to do next is we're going to go there. We've done question B where we've drawn the graph, the altitude of the sky for 100 seconds. So we've done part B. Now we're doing Part C. Use your graph to estimate the greatest altitude reached by the rocket. Okay, so it's going to be the tip of the peak. Okay, we know it occurs between 60 and 80, so therefore it should be roughly around 70. So what happens is we go back to our graph, and we now look for its maximum peak, and it occurs at 70, and this is 70 kilometers. It happens at 70 seconds as well. And it's also 70 kilometers, which is this value here, 70 kilometers above the uh, above sea level, okay? So this is it here. The next part, what we got there here is, use your graph to estimate one time at which the altitude is 60 kilometers an hour. So we go back to our graph. Okay, and we look for 60 kilometers, okay? So here's the 60 kilometers here. Okay, so we're going to do is we're going to draw a line going across at 60 kilometers to see when it hit, right? So it hits here at 60 kilometers, and what we're going to do next is we're going to draw a line going fairly down to see what time this is at. 
So hit 60 kilometers, it comes directly down. And remember, we got to figure out what each small block is worth. So if you imagine there's 10 blocks in between 0 and 20, each block is worth 2 seconds. So this one lands at roughly 26 seconds, okay? So the answer to this question is going to be 26 seconds. Okay, next one. Check your answer in part D using the formula for altitude, okay? So H is equal to 4 over 5 plus 7 over 10. It's not T squared, it's just meant to be T, okay? And then minus 1 over 100 T squared. So what's going to happen is we know that it's 26 seconds. Once again, that's not squared, so don't worry, I didn't do it, right? So it's 7 over 10 multiplied by 26. And what happens is 26 squared, and we know that the height, put all that into your calculator, once again, leaving out the squared, it's not meant to be there, okay, and it's 59.82 kilometers high. It's very close to 60 kilometers, that's why an answer of 26 seconds is a good approximation. Okay, next one. By solving the equation, when you're solving the equation, you're going to get a quadratic equation or an answer where t equals something. So we know that h equals 9, find t. Here's the formula for h. Okay, just got to fix up because I just... Now what happened is, the formula for h is actually doesn't have t squared, it just has t. So just remember that. Okay, so remember to double check your equation before you begin. Okay, so what happens is we get 9 h is 9, that's 45, 7 over 10 times t, okay, minus 1 over 200 t squared, okay, now we're going to multiply it by 100, what happens is when we multiply it by 100, or 200, we're going to get rid of the fraction, so we're going to get 9 times 200 is 1,800, 45 times 200 is 9,000, and then we're going to get, uh, 140t, because 7 over 10 multiplied by 200 is 140, and then finally minus 1 over 200t squared multiplied by 200 is t squared. Move everything over one side and set up a quadratic equation. t squared minus 410, 140t, and then move the, the 9000 over the side, we're going to get 7200. Quite a difficult uh, uh, quite an equation to solve because the big numbers go right into the minus b formula where minus b b is minus 140 a is 1 and c is minus 7200 go through your minus b formula so put down the numbers minus b is plus 140 plus or minus the square root of minus 140 squared minus 4 times uh, that's meant to be a minus here as well minus 7200 okay so this here is meant to be minus 7,200, okay? And what we end up getting is 140 plus or minus 220 divided by two. It can't be a minus number, cause it's time. So 140 minus 220 is not allowed. So therefore, when we put all of this into the calculator, it actually turns out to be 220. So 140 plus 220 divided by two is what we're looking for. And the answer to that is 180 seconds. Okay? So please remember that's minus 7,200. Okay? Now, next one. By finding the change in altitude in one second, or otherwise, find and estimate the speed at which the rockets are falling when their altitude is 9. Now remember, in differentiation, if you have a formula where h is the distance, then the first derivative is the speed. So the first derivative is the speed. So what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this equation here. Differentiate it. And 45 turns to 0. 7 over 10 t turns to 7 over 10 because the t disappears. To differentiate 1 over 200 t squared, bring the 2 to the front, then divide by 200. So what we get here, bring the 2 to the front, and what we get is 2 multiplied by 1 over 200 t and 7 over 10t minus 2 over 200t is the speed, okay? Now to get the speed, we have to know the time. If you look at the last question, we know the altitude is nine kilometers an hour. And we just did a question that we found out the time at which the altitude of the rocket is nine kilometers per hour. And we found out that that is 180 seconds. So replace t with 180 seconds. And what we should get is we should get our speed. So replace that with 180. Place 2 with 180, 
and what we will get is that our speed is going to be our speed is going to be minus 1.1 kilometers per second because remember distance is measured in kilometers for this question and time is also measured in seconds next question uh, this is a periodic function defined for x element r, which means that everything, x element r basically means that minus numbers are included for x, uh, decimals are included. The period is indicated in the diagram. Write down the period and range of the function. Now, the thing to remember is period is where it repeats itself. So for the period, it's going to be basically there's a gap of four between the two successive peaks. So the period is like an x value question, which gets you four. The range is a y value question, which means you gotta get the, the lowest value of y and the highest value of y. So what it is, is you put in square brackets the lowest value followed by the highest value. The lowest value is gonna be minus one, and the highest value is gonna be plus one. Okay? Now to find f of 71, what you notice is we know what f of minus one is, f of zero, f of one, f of one is zero f of 2 is 1, f of 3 is 0, f of 4 is minus 1. We don't know what f of 71 is, but if we keep tracking backwards, we can figure out what f of 71 is the same as. So what we need to do is we need to keep taking away the period from 71 until we get something we know. So just keep taking away 4s, and basically a number that goes in, that 4 goes into it is like uh, is 60. Or so take away 60, so we know that f 71 should be the same thing as... 71 minus 320, 71, it's the same as F11. Take away another 4, it's the same as F7. And F7 is the same as F3. Go back to your diagram, you know that F3 is 0. Therefore, it's got to be 0. Okay. So F3 is 0. Next thing we got to do is differentiate this. I've identified this as a product rule because U and V is there. Okay, so what we're going to do is there's two brackets on the plate here, write down the product rule. Okay, let u equal four, u is 4x minus 1, differentiate. When you differentiate minus 1, it turns into 0. When you differentiate 4x, the x drops and becomes 4. So to u, the x is 4. v is 3 minus 2x squared. When you differentiate 3, it turns to 0. When you differentiate 2x squared, bring the 2 to the front, 2 multiplied by minus 2 is minus 4, take 1 away from the power, and you get 4x. Okay? And what's happening next is the VDX is minus 4x. Plug in your numbers into your equation, and remember to simplify your answer. Simplify your answer means multiply out your brackets. So we get u is 4x minus 1, the VDX is minus 4x, v is 3 minus 2x squared, and the UDX is 4. Multiply them out. 4x times minus 4x minus 16x squared. Minus 1 times minus 4 is plus 4x. 3 times 4 is 12 minus 8x squared. Take the x squareds away from you, you get 20 minus 24x squared plus 4x plus 12. Now, what's going to happen next is you can basically factorize it by taking out minus 4. If you take out minus 4, what's going to happen here is you're going to get 6x squared minus x minus 3, because they're all divi divisible by 4. Okay, that's those two done. Next one, we're going to do the product drill. And when we're doing the product drill, it's going to, uh, sorry, we're, we're doing the quotient drill because it's a fraction. Now you got to write down the quotient drill, where dy dx is uh, v times du dx minus u times the v dx over v squared. Now it wants us to find that the range of values for which do y dx is less than zero. That tells us to differentiate and put our answer less than zero. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. u equals one, therefore the u dx must be equal to zero. So when you differentiate one, you get zero. Next one, v equals x squared minus three x. Differentiate x squared and you get two x minus three. And then put them in, and what we get is v is x squared minus three x. Uh, zero, because when you differentiate du dx is zero, u is, mi uh, is one, so minus one times the v dx, which is two x minus three. Put them into their formulas. v squared on the bottom. Now, uh, x squared minus three x multiplied by zero is still zero, so that just scratches off. Multiply it out. 
and what we get is minus 1 times 2x is 2x, minus 1 times 3 is, that's actually going to be plus 3. Okay, so let's hopefully see if I figured this out. Okay, so minus 1 times 3 is plus 3. So, what we're going to do here is change this to plus 3. Okay, and this is all going to be less than 0. And it's less than 0. Now, what we can do here is we know that the bottom, we know that for a negative number, when you have something squared on the bottom, it always has to be positive. So we know that the numerator, the denominator is a positive number. So therefore, the numerator has to be smaller than 0. So it's going to be minus 2x plus 3 less than 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the 2x out to your side. And what we can get is uh, 3 less than 2x. We can spin this around where 2x is greater than 3. Divide by 2, x is greater than 3 over 2. Okay, next question. Let f of x equal 2x plus 1 over x, where x is element r and x is element 0. Find the equation of the tangent of the curve y equals f of x at the point 1, 3. Now remember, find the equation of the tangent. A tangent is a line. Find the equation of a line. Look this up in your geometry part of your course, and you're going to see that it's x minus x1. Now, if you imagine this is a curve, okay, and there's a point on the curve, which is 1, 3, and now what we need to do is we need to get a line that touches the curve like a tangent. So tangents only touch once, okay? So what we need to do is to find it, we need to know the slope of the line. So we need to find the slope, which is m. So we need to know the slope and the point at which, a point on the line. We already know x1, y1. Now remember, we're in differentiation. And to find the equation, to find the equation of a, to find a, a slope, in, in differentiation, the slope is the first derivative. So slope is dy dx, also known as f dash x. So what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this here, okay? So differentiate 2x. So y equals 2x plus 1 over x. So differentiate 2x, and what we get is 2. Now, this one here, u and v, so it's a quotient drill again, okay? So we're just going to do the quotient drill again. So when we do the quotient drill, we're going to get uh, dy dx ends up to be v times to u dx minus u times to v dx all over v squared. Okay, so what we're going to get is u equals 1 to u dx, therefore equal to 0. v is equal to x, therefore to v dx equals 1. Differentiate x, you get 1. So plug these in, and what we get for just this part here, this part here, is basically this part here, just the whole thing, right? So that's just basically going to be the whole answer in here, okay? So what we're going to get is the y dx is equal to, when we differentiate that, we're going to get v, which is x, times the u dx, which is 0, and x times 0 doesn't exist, so that's gone. Okay, so that's gone. Next part minus u times the v dx, which is going to be minus 1 times 1, divided by v squared. And v squared is x squared. So our answer here is going to be minus 1 over x squared. So we're going to have minus 1 over x squared. Now, to get the slope, we have to figure out what value this is here. Okay? And what we know is that x equals 1. Because it says the point. So this means x equals 1. Okay, for this slope. So that means that the y dx ends up to be 2 minus 1 over 1 squared, which means that the slope or the y dx equals 1. Now, now that we know the slope equals 1, what we can do next is just 
just uh, I'll do this here. We know that slope equals one. So what we can say next is basically we know what the slope is. Slope is one, so we can now do y minus y one, which is going to be three into m, which is one minus x minus one. Then we have y minus 3 equals x minus 1. Bring y and 3 over to your side, so we're going to get x minus 1. And then it's going to be plus 3 minus 1 equals 0. So it's going to be x minus y plus 2 equals 0. Okay, and that is going to be the equation of that line. Okay, next question. Q is another point on the curve y equals f of x, such that the tangent at Q is parallel to the tangent at P. So what we need to find out is find the coordinates of Q. Okay, so this is a very tough question, right? So what we know is, is keywords here is parallel. The slope, the slope equals one because it's parallel to the slope we just got. Okay. And we know that dy dx, which is the, we know that dy dx equals the slope, okay? So that we know that dy dx equals 1, therefore, what we have to do is we've got to go back to our last section and put in what we got for dy dx. And we got, uh, I do believe it was x squared minus 1. So when we differentiate this last time, we got 2 minus 1 over x squared. Okay, so 2 minus 1 over x squared, all right? So it's 2 minus 1 over x squared equals 1. We have to solve this, okay? So first things first, bring bring the 2 over the other side. So we're going to get minus 1 over x squared equals 1 minus 2, okay? We're going to get minus 1 over x squared equals minus 1. Multiply both sides by minus 1, and we're going to get 1 over x squared equals 1. Bring the x squared up, and we're going to get 1 equals x squared. This means x is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay? Now, if we're asked to find the coordinates, we need to find the x value and the y value. The x value is 1 or minus 1. And what we know from the last question is that the value that's 1 is 1, 3, because 1, 3 was one of the answers, okay? So 1, 3 is one of the answers. The only answer we didn't know was minus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to find out what what value minus 1 is, okay? So the y value, the y value equals f of x. And what we know about f of x is that f of x is... 2x plus 1 over x. And we know that x equals minus 1. Therefore, it's going to be 2 times minus 1 plus 1 over minus 1. That gives us minus 2 minus 1, which is minus 3. And this is going to be the point minus 1 minus 3. Okay, so that's that question there. Now, we're next on, that's end of question 8. So now we're on question 9. Okay, so first one of question 9. Differentiate x cubed minus 7x squared with respect to x. So the first one's going to be 3x squared. Bring the 3 to the front, take 1 away from 3. Bring the 2 to the front and multiply, take 1 away from that. So it's going to be 14x. Bring the, take away the x and you get 6. Okay, next question is a product rule u and v, so the, uh, sorry, the quotient drill, excuse me, where if y equals u over v, then dy dx, then dy dx is equal to uh, v times the u dx, and it's u times the v dx, all over v squared. So what we're going to get here is the following. We're going to get uh, dv dx. So we're going to get u equals 3x plus 1. When you differentiate u to get the u dx, 
the tree disappears from the uh, the x disappears from tree x and the one turns to a zero. So the u the x is three. V equals x minus two. Therefore the v the x equals the two disappears and there's a one in front of the x. So when you differentiate that it turns to one. Got to plug in our numbers now. x minus 2 times 3 minus u which is minus 3x plus 1 and times dv dx which is 1 all over phi squared which is going to be x minus 2 squared so we're going to get here going to multiply these out 3x minus 6 now remember this 1 there's a 1 in here and the 1 and the minus 1 will make minus 1. So you can just get rid of that. So it's going to be minus 3x minus 1. All divided by x minus 2 squared. And our answer is going to be minus 7 over x minus 2 squared. And that's in the same, it's in the same uh presentation is that where k equals minus 7 and n equals 2. Okay, next part. A uh, ball is uh, rolled in a straight line. Oh wait, a part 2, excuse me. I forgot about a part, I got b part 2. I knew it felt a bit short. Right, this one here is a product drill. And to identify a product drill, you'll always have a big bracket with a power on the outside. To do product drills, what you need to do is you need to bring the power to the front. You always keep the bracket. And like all differentiation, take away one from the take away one from the power. And then the part that most people forget is you gotta differentiate the bracket itself. Differentiate x squared, you get two x. Differentiate minus 2, you get minus 2, and then there's no need for the 9 disappears. Next thing you gotta do is you gotta replace all x's with minus 2's. So what we end up here is 4 times minus 2 squared, minus 2 times 2, minus 9, all that to the power of 3, 2 bracket minus 2, minus 2. Now, just be careful with this. Okay, so what I'd advise you to do is just enter each bracket individually into the calculator. Okay, so this is going to be minus 9 to the power of 3. And this one here is going to be, that's going to multiply into, into it's going to multiply into minus 6 okay so when you put down to your calculator multiply into minus 6 then and the next thing was it's minus 2 so that is actually not that's not minus 9 it's actually it's actually minus 1 okay so just make sure you don't make any errors with the minus sign okay so it wasn't 2 it was minus 2 so when you put all this into your calculator what you would have got was minus 1 to the power of 3. Next thing you got to do is you got to put minus 1 to the power of 3. Just put it into your calculator exactly as it looks and the answer you'll get is plus 24. Okay, next question. A ball is rolled in straight long along a surface. The distance s in meters the ball travels is given by is s equals 18t minus 2t squared. Where t is time in seconds for an instant ball will be instant move. Find the speed of the ball after 3 seconds. Remember, if s is distance, the SCT is speed. Okay, so the SCT equals speed. So we got to differentiate this and the SCT, differentiate 18T, bring, get rid of the T, so you get 18 minus 4T. Uh, 2T squared, bring the 2 to the front, take 1 away from that, so you're going to get minus 4T. Find the speed of the ball after 3 seconds. T equals 3. So it's going to be 18 minus 4 times 3. And it's going to be 18 minus 12. And the STT 
ends up to be six seconds. Okay, so six. Now it's going to be at speed, remember, so it's not kilometers per hour, it's going to be uh, meters per second. Okay, so meters per second. How far is the ball from the starting point when it stops moving? When it stops moving, its speed equals zero. Because it's no longer moving. And its speed is 18 minus is the first derivative. So the SCT is speed. Therefore, 18 minus 4t must equal 0. Bring the 4t over to your side. So the 18 equals 4t. 4t therefore equals 18. Therefore, it takes t equals 18 over 4. t equals 4.5 seconds to stop. Right? Now, that's not the answer to time. That's not the answer to the question. How far? How far means distance. So to find distance, you need to write down the distance equation. And you know that the distance equation is this. S equals 18t minus 2t squared. Therefore, S equals 18 multiplied by 4.5 minus 2 times 4.5 squared. Put it in into the calculator exactly as it looks, 18 multiplied by 4.5 minus 2 multiplied by 4.5 squared. And when you do that, what we should get is 40.5 meters. Okay, next part. Show that the speed of the ball decreases at a constant rate while it is moving. Okay, so show that the acceleration equals a constant. Now a constant is a number that can change value. So it can have no letters. Okay, an example of constants would be 4. 4 is a constant. Well, 4t isn't a constant because it has a t in it. Okay, so that's what we got to look out for. Now, now the trick with this question is Show that the speed of the ball decreases. So we're talking about the acceleration. Acceleration is acceleration is basically the change in speed. Okay, so to get the acceleration, what we gotta do is get the second derivative. Okay? So if the first derivative is 18 minus 40, we need to find out what the second derivative is by differentiating this again. And the second derivative is the acceleration. Okay? And 18 turns into 0, minus 4, t turns into minus 4. So basically, it's minus 4 meters per second squared. So it is a constant acceleration because it's minus 4 meters per second squared. Okay, next one. Now, what I'd probably get you guys to do here is just basically, uh, you might want to just put them into the calculator and find out you can put them into your calculator or you can work them out individually. So the calculator is probably the best way to do it using the table function in your calculator, but we can do it out the, uh, the longer way at the moment. So we can say f of minus 5, which means replace x with minus 5 is 1 over uh, minus 5 plus 2. f of minus 1.5 is 1 over minus 1.5 plus 2. f of minus 1 is basically 1 over minus 1 plus 2. f of 0 is 1 over 0 plus 2. It's a handy one. It's 0.5. Okay, and then f of 1 equals 1 over 1 plus 2. Okay, so we now know what each one is, right? So we're going to do them in decimals. So f of minus 5 is basically minus a third when you put it into your calculator. And minus a third in your calculator is minus 0.33. And it has the hat on it because it keeps going on forever. Okay, minus 1.5 is minus 1. It's basically 2. Okay, so it's going to be plus 2. This one here equals plus 2. The next one equals 1. 
and the one after that equals plus a third. So point three with the hat on, okay? Point three, 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 okay? So one third. Now, now that we have that uh, drawn out, what we need to do next is we need to, uh, the diagram shows part of the graph of the function x, complete the graph from minus five to one. To x equals one. So we gotta do minus two upwards, okay? So the first one is basically we know that minus uh, when x equals when x equals minus one and a half, one and a half is roughly here. The answer is two. So one and a half is here. So that's our first one done, which is uh, this one here. Now we're going to do minus one one. Minus one one is here. That's the second one done. Now we're going to do zero a half, which is going to be zero is here and a half up there. And then the next one we're going to do is x equals one, y equals a third. So we're going to roughly do around, uh, sorry, x equals one, y equals a third is roughly there, okay? Now, what we got to do next is we've got to sort of make, make it look like the mirror image of the one we just did. So what we can do is we can say that it comes up like this. Now make sure you go through each each point, okay? So each point, you have to go through each point, okay? So it's very important you hit you hit the points and make it as smooth of a curve as you can, okay? And make sure it never crosses the line, okay? So it doesn't cross either line; it goes all the way over. Now that that's done, on the diagram, graph the function in the domain. Now the next one we have to do is graph the line g of x equals x plus 2. So we have to graph a line onto this as well. So what we got to do is we got to graph this line. So we're going to get all the x values now. Just one second. So we're going to do it from minus 5 all the way to 1. So minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1. We'll just give it a bigger gap here, okay? And we're going to draw lines across. So we're going to say these are our x values up here. And this is g of x down here. And g of x is another way of saying the y value of a line, okay? So this function is a line. The reason I know it's a line is there's no x squared or anything like that. And the second reason I know it's a line is there's no fractions, okay? Uh, no, uh, the x is on the top. It's not part of a fraction on the bottom, that is, okay? So what we can say is this is going to be minus 5, minus 4, 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1. Now we're going to put in our values, okay? So when it's minus 5, it's going to be minus 3, minus 4 is going to be minus 2, minus 3 is going to be minus 1, minus 2 is going to be 0, 1, <coughs> uh, 2, and 3. So. I should write down all my points up here just to make my work a bit easier. So it'd be five minus three, four minus two, minus three minus one, minus two zero, minus one one, zero two, and one three. Now a quick way of doing this would be just to do the first and the last point, okay? So one tree is located here, and minus five minus three, minus five minus three is located here. So a cheap way of doing it would be just to draw the line, uh, just in here now, like so. And therefore you have all your points drawn right away, because that's the next point, that's the next point, that's the next point, and that's the next point, whichever way you feel like doing it. So what happens is that's our line drawn now, okay? So that's our that's our question asked there on the diagram of draw the function. Okay, so we're on our next question now. Use the graph to estimate the range of values for which f of x. This means the value of the curve, the y value of the curve, is smaller than or e 
equal to the y value of the line. Okay, so let's find this out using the graph, okay? So y value of the curve versus y so y value of the curve is smaller than y value of the line. So let's find this out. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to reread this question one more time. Y value of the curve is less than Y value of the line. Okay. So Y value of curve less than or equal to Y value of line. So let's figure this out now. Okay. Let's start off, and it also says the values of X. So let's start off at the bottom. Minus 5, okay. Currently, the line is smaller than the curve because the y value of the curve is bigger than the y value of the line. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And all of a sudden, at minus 4, the y value of the curve is still bigger than the y value of the line. But at minus 3, they're equal to each other. Okay, so it starts at minus 3 where they're now equal to each other. So they're equal at minus 3. From minus 3 to 2, the line, the line is bigger than the curve. Okay? So it goes from minus 3 to 2. So minus 3. So minus 3 to minus 2, the line is bigger than the curve at the same points. So minus 3 less than or equal to x. So everything in between minus 3 and minus 2. That's the first part of our answer. Now let's start the other side of minus 2. The line emerges again. And currently the line is now smaller than the curve at the same point. But at minus 1, they both become equal again. So at, minus, uh, at, at plus 1, they're equal. Okay. And anything above plus 1, it seems to be greater than. Because the line is bigger than... At x equals 1, the line is higher than the curve. So it's going to be x greater than or equal to 1. Everything over x equals minus 1. Sorry, it happens at minus 1. It's going to be... Uh, so everything greater than x equal to minus 1, it gets bigger. Because you can see that the curve is bigger than the line. Curve is bigger than the line. Now they're equal. Now line is bigger than curve, line is bigger than curve, line is bigger than curve. So anything bigger than minus 1, it's bigger. Okay? So our answer is, answer for this question is, minus 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to minus 2, or x greater than or equal to minus 1. Oh, sorry, and. Okay? Prove that the curve has no turning points. Turning points means, to, to find a turning point, we put the first derivative equal to 0, we find the x value, then we find the y value. Find x's, find y's. So in order to do this, we have to differentiate it and, put equal, and solve equal to 0. So what we need to do is we need to get the equation. So y equals 1 over x plus 2. Remember, f of x is the same thing as y. Next thing we're going to do is differentiate this. And we can differentiate this using the product rule. And doing the product rule, what we need to do is this. Uh, sorry, the quotient rule. It's a quotient rule because it's a fraction. Excuse me. So when doing the quotient rule, we get y equals u over v, then you say dy dx ends up to be v times du dx minus u times dv dx divided by v squared. Now, what's going to happen here? We should know that u equals 1, du dx equals 0. We know that v equals x plus 2, therefore dv dx must equal 1. So what we're going to get here, I'm just going to fill it in. V comes first, x plus 2 times 0. N minus 
u times dv dx, which is going to be 1 times dv dx, which is also a 1, all over x uh, phi squared, which is x plus 2 squared. And what this happens is it's going to be minus 1, because that turns into 0. So minus 1 times 1 is minus 1 over x plus 2 squared. Now this has to be equal to 0. And the problem with this is that the 1 on the bottom is always a positive number. So minus 1 divided by a positive number can never be equal to 0. So when you cross multiply, you get minus 1 equals 0. And minus 1, minus 1 cannot be equal to 0. This equation has no solutions. And that is the end of that test.